These little uh, humidity meters, hygrometers, are readily available on eBay. Um, if you just type in digital humidity meter, you'll find them. You can also get round dial ones as well, just with a standard uh, non-electronic mechanism. But if you buy uh, a few of these, and they're, they're cheap, they're only about 99 pence each, including shipping, which is so commonly the case on eBay. If you buy a load, you'll find that if sat next to each other, there's a variation in them. If you're wondering how to actually determine the accuracy of them, here's how you can calibrate them, or at least get an indication of how accurate they are. If you get a little tub, like even a cap, drinks cap or something, and then you add some sodium chloride, which is common table salt, and you add enough water, theoretically, if you're doing this super mega accurately, like lab grade, it would be pure chemicals and distilled water. But, you know, for home use, table salt and tap water is ideal. And if you mix it into a slurry and put it in a sealed bag, then it's going to create a humidity in the bag of approximately 75% humidity. And in this case, it's, it's showing 1% above that. In fact, I think it's about 75.5, and it's, it's unusual. It really... It, it's consistent across a wide range of temperatures that it will uh, settle out at this humidity. And I've got another set up here where I've got a sealed container. And it's worth mentioning, you have to put the uh, put them in and just leave them for about uh, at least a day just to let the humidity stabilise. But in this one, um, I've got two displaying, I've got three displaying 75%, so they're good. I've got one displaying 73, one displaying 74, and one displaying 77. And all I would do with that is the one displaying 77, I'll, I would just write on it minus two to show, you know, uh, or plus two, uh, just whichever way you want to actually do it, to show how, you know, it relates to the actual humidity, the reference humidity. But, um, it's a good, uh, simple way to do it. It's really incredibly simple. So let's take a look inside one of these. There's not really an awful lot in them. They usually take two cells, but the two cells are just in parallel. I'll just uh, try and get those cells out. And you can run it on just one cell, but I think they put use two just for the uh, long battery runtime. And if you open it up, inside is the usual little arrangement. You've got the circuit board, you've got an LCD display with the zebra strip on it, which is a sort of alternating, insulating and conducting strip that just transfers these contacts on this circuit board onto the uh, the transparent uh, conductive layers on the LCD panel. You've got the usual blob chip, and then you've got the two sensors. The temperature sensor here, which is a little bead thermistor, and then the humidity sensor. Now, the humidity sensor is quite interesting because... Uh, let's see, where where is it? Have I buried it? Yes, I've buried it. Uh, Oh yeah, I have actually, oh there it is. The humidity sensor looks like this. And it's basically a ceramic plate. And this is actually one of the humidity sensors. I should mention you're not supposed to touch them because they contain a moisture absorbing surface and if you contaminate it with the salts in your fingers it will basically wreck it. It will never read right again, which that one's going to do. But that's a, a picture of that actual sensor, um, just zoomed up. And you can see it's got these conductive layers on the uh, on the ceramic substrate and then not so visible is the fact that there's a sort of it's been dipped and that area there has a sort of lacquer across it and that's uh, that lacquer is a sort of conductive well they, I think it's a polymer they call it uh, I looked up a, a data sheet on it um, it uses a thin film polymer and it, it's basically it's salts in it that absorb the water and change the resistance. Now, I say change the resistance, and you have to be careful because there are little modules being sold on eBay which have these sensors, and they're using an op-amp to actually measure it, and they're just using the sensor as a resistor, as far as I can see, which isn't ideal because you can't really do that. Um, if you use these sensors as a resistor, because it's got moisture in it, the it will cause polarization, actual metal from the electrode will migrate into the, the film and change its ability to react to the humidity properly. So the correct way to drive these is with AC. And uh, this data sheet here for Amphenol, Willow Technologies, 
says DC current should never be applied to the EMD4000 humidity sensor. Application of direct current will polarise the sensor and cause an irreversible shift. Only a symmetrical AC excitation current should be applied. Amphenol recommends the application of a low-level AC excitation, 1 volt AC at 1 kHz typical, to minimise self-heating effects. So basically speaking, you're measuring the impedance, but actually it is kind of resistance, but you're measuring it with AC so that you don't cause that migration of the electrodes into the into the material. And I have one of these modules knocking about. I think I've got the version of the relay. And it just doesn't read right at all. It just gradually just migrates. The range just migrates continually. And that is what's actually happening there. It's changing the characteristics. But these little sensors are available online. You can buy packs of them. Uh, they're called an HR202L humidity sensor. But having said that, you can also get the... If you type in humidity and Arduino, you'll all see digi also see digital versions, which just have uh, plus 5, 0 volt and data. And they're actually a better option because they deal with all the process and they have the little thing that generates the AC signal inside and measures the humidity. But um, they're, they're interesting technology. Um, certainly it's good for keeping tabs on the humidity in your home and making sure the humidifiers are doing their... Dehumidifiers, to say, are doing their job. Well, humidifiers as well if you live in a very dry area. But, uh, they're cheap and uh, once you've actually got a rough calibration, I mean this one is now at 75%, which means it's pretty much spot on, um, then you know you at least know where you stand, if it's way off or not. And it's interesting to note, I had one of these that was just absolutely just bonkers, it was like 10% off, and I opened it, and there was flux all over the humidity sensor, and I tried washing it off, but that really didn't work. And I had a pack of these little sensors, and I, I put one in, to replace, and it actually went to virtually 1% accuracy. So um, they, they seem to be very, very standard in the way they're manufactured. It's very consistent manufacturing. But yeah, they're interesting little devices.